Well, welcome back, everybody, to Spinning with Spitfire. Um, today, we are plying up some of the Shirsty Cat designs. Superwash Merino in color 130. Um, really great fiber that we started spinning last time. I spun up the rest of that fiber. I even started plying some of that. It gives me a really nice uh, pops of color uh, when I chain plied it. Uh, it's chain plied or Navajo plied, uh, depending on who you talk to. Um, I think the more PC thing to call it is chain plied these days. Uh, you can see that chain plying really preserves those colors, so you see some really bright greens and some really dark purples. We'll keep going today. We'll do a second skein of that. Pardon me. I have the singles sitting on my, uh, what is that called? Um, my lazy case. Right underneath the camera. Chain plying is hand crocheting while adding twist. Sounds tricky. It's a little bit tricky to get started. I, you see, I start by making a loop up on top and holding that crease over where my leader starts. Um, I just trimmed my fingernails, which is tough for getting that loop started. There we go. Here we go. Uh, just pull that out. I am flying today on my sidekick. Oh, sounds like something is dragging. It's been a while since I've spun on it, so I wouldn't be surprised if things are not calibrated quite right. So we'll get things going. Bear with me as I adjust things. Oh, there we go. So what you will see I'm doing is sliding my fingers up. I have this triangle. I'm pulling more of the fiber up, or more of the single up, and down and pulling the new single through. Down and through. Down and through. You can you can control how big your triangles are. You can make them small or large and long, however long your uh, arms can go, I suppose. This is just not Oh, that's. There we go. I could feel that there was some drag against that back wheel. Yeah. One more. The shorter your triangles, uh, the more preserved your color pops will be, as you're overlapping more of the light color. You like a little bit of marrow, a larger triangle is better. And you can pay attention as you come through the color changes to help preserve those colors. So now we're moving into some purple. A joy to spin, and it is a joy to ply too. The key to a really good chain ply is very strong singles. Um, really recommend even over spinning adding extra twist in your singles to keep them steady as you go through. There's a balance, 
because you can see if they're over spun, you might get some kinking up on itself, as you see that sometimes I'm dealing with. If it's under applied, though, um, you end up with the yarn breaking. And I'm sure at some point during our time together, It goes well for a little bit and then it gets tight, so I'm wondering if I need to add some oil. But now it seems to be good. The flyer and the maidens on the sidekick are a little bit more finicky than I found on my flat iron to get it to spin without friction. A lot more different things happening on the sidekick with the 90 degree turn of the drive band that you just don't get the flat iron and the other shaft wheels. Hmm. Oh, I think I need to tighten that up just a bit. There we go. I am using my woolly winder so I don't need to stop and adjust my feeder flyer hooks. Um, with chain plying this is a huge advantage. As you can tell your hands have to be in certain positions in order to ply. So breaking is really tough to get your, um, your fiber to stay and not get tangled. When I chain ply, I try, if I plan on chain plying, I usually make sure that I apply on at least two bobbins so that I have to take a break. So otherwise I will apply straight through and that can be you know, upwards of two or three hours and that can be really tough on your hands. Uh, you'll notice that most of my videos are about 20 to 25 minutes and that's even pushing it sometimes on my hands. Make sure you take lots of breaks and be gentle on your body. I hope that the focus today is on the flyer and the bobbin. I noticed in the last video that it was not, and I apologize for that. I work hard on getting the video camera set up properly. What do you think? Do you like the bright green better than the dark purple? I enjoyed spinning the dark, or the, the pops of highlighter green the best, especially when there was a little bit of dark green in there. But I find flying the purple, the dark, dark purple, very satisfying. Speaking a little bit of yarn integrity and how wonderful chain plying is. The chain plying is, gives you a great 
integrity of color with the yarn. So you get some, especially if you have a bump of fiber with really high contrasting colors. You want to preserve those contrasts. This is a great way to do that. However, the yarn itself does have some drawbacks. If you are planning on making socks, um, you know, the chain plying can lead to more holes because as you wear one of the plies down, you may end up with uh, a hole because the one ply breaks and it actually severs a whole section. So like one part of the triangle breaks, the whole triangle is at risk of collapsing. Um, depending on the type of sock you made and where it breaks, usually it's on the heel. Um, if you're going to wear through one thread, you're going to wear through them all. It's not necessarily the case. But that's something to think about. Um, and I would say that after you wish, wash and set the yarn, I think that, ooh, there is a big pigtail right there. Let's see if I can get this out without getting that. Oh, there we go. There we go. Let it slide up. Ugh. Not the best section. Uh, so there it ends up with a little bit of, it can be a little bit of weakness. Um, if you are not a very consistent spinner, like you're, you tend to spin really thick and thin, the nature of the chain ply will exacerbate those differences, uh, meaning your thick sections will be three times as thick, and your thin sections will be three times as thin. Ooh, this is very my last skein I really struggled with breaking, and this one I'm struggling with too much twist. Very opposite problems. So what was I talking about? I was talking about um, exacerbating those problems. So um, chain plying it can be a lot of fun. I definitely suggest you try it at least once as you... Uh, Spin your journey, take your journey spinning. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of advantages. You may want to wait if you're hoping for a smoother yarn to wait until you're a, a little more consistent. Um, If you're hoping for a, if you're not a very consistent spinner and you're hoping for something even more wild in thicks and thins, chain plying can definitely help you achieve that as well. All depends on what you want and what you're going to use it for in the end. In general, why we ply yarns is to make it stronger. Uh, one thread is not as strong as several threads. As two threads twisted together is not as strong as three threads twisted together. It's not as strong as four threads twisted together. So you have that um, multiplicity and strength that's being offered by it. Uh, if you are an inconsistent spinner and you spin thick and thin, a plying can help mask those differences. Uh, it tends to even out over the course of two, three, or four plies. The more plies you have, the rounder your yarn is. I just love a five ply. A five ply is so bouncy. 
and so wonderful. It just makes my heart sing. But if you don't spin very thin, that can be a very thick, thick, thick yarn. So wonderful though, so round and bouncy. Perfect for stuff, lots of texture. If you're gonna knit something with texture or do something textured with your weaving, super fun. Oop, another pigtail. Dark purple and it marls with the white, super fun. Uh oh. Another pigtail. Come on. There we go. Ooh, that was a thin area right, right there. Sometimes it can help to chain ply if you have a tension bobbin or lazy cape. Um, mine is a gravity tensioned cape. Oh my. Are, or my bobbins are sitting at 45 degrees, and let's gravity tension it. Something like chain plying. Maybe you even want to add a washer or two on top of the bobbin to keep it in place. Uh-oh. Another kink. There we go. Seriously. Come on. There we go. Oh, goodness. Once you get going, you get into a good rhythm. Ooh, that's that dark green. It's fun. <coughs>
Oops, I missed. <clears throat> so I'm going to thank everybody for joining me today. I'm going to finish up spinning this. And hopefully I'll have it to show you next time. Washed and ready to go. And... Hope you're having a good week. Had a great time at YarnCon. It's great to see my friends that I saw there. And I'm sorry it took so long to post. Glad I actually missed it. And if you missed YarnCon, I'm sorry. Put it on your calendar for next year. It's usually the first full weekend of April in Plumbers Hall in Chicagoland. It is a very tiny venue. But it is like shopping Etsy, so if you enjoy Etsy and you wish you could see everything in person, it's a great opportunity to do that. And I took my daughter this year, and she was three. She was three. And I think her favorite thing was the uh, merino and sparkle that was in a giant tub on the floor and she just hopped right out of her stroller and had to like lay on top of it. You know what? I kind of agreed with her. I didn't buy any of I didn't buy any fiber this year. Bought a little bit of yarn. Some whole buttload of buttons. That was about it. Well, I hope you have a good week. You can follow me over on Instagram under Spitfire SMC. Same handle as my YouTube channel. And you can also find me on Ravelry. And look at all the other projects and things I'm knitting and sewing and all of that stuff. Crochet. Ah. Maybe someday I'll get back to weaving. And, uh, and all my other spinning projects. We don't always get to see everything that I'm doing on camera. So have a great week. And I'll see you in about a week. Bye.